Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Marcus and today in this video I will share with you how to design an animated kinetic typography using Adobe After Effects. So let's go. First thing, let's create a new composition and I'm going to name it kinetic type 006 and make it 1080 by 1080 at 30 frames per second, 15 seconds long and press OK. The first thing we need to do is to select our type tool. Then let's click on our composition and write our first word and let's adjust the size to have an excellent scale in our composition. With that done, select the text layer, right-click and select Precompose. And let's name our new precomp text 01. On the settings, move all attributes into the new composition. Check the box to adjust the composition duration and the one to open your composition. Great! Now let's select the region of interest tool and make a rectangle around the text. Make it as close as possible, but leave a little space. Then let's go to Composition and select Crop Comp to Region of Interest. Perfect! Now right click in our Layer Timeline panel and select New Solid. Let's name it BG, make it Comp Size and change the color to something fun. This solid will work as a reference for later, so we don't need to worry about it too much right now. Now let's go back to the main comp and with our text composition selected, let's go to Effects, Distort and choose Corner Pin. Now still with our composition selected, let's go to Edit and choose Duplicate. Then let's align the compositions, one in the top and other in the bottom. And the next thing we need to do is go to the Project panel, select the text one and go to Edit and Duplicate. Select the new copy and while holding the Alt key, drag and drop it over the main composition, replacing one of the other text compositions. Now let's go inside of our text to composition and change the text inside. Select the solid and go to Layer, Solid Settings and change the color to something different. With that done, press New and return to the main composition. Now we need to connect the top layer bottom corner pins with the bottom layer top corner pins. The easiest way to make this happen is using two null objects. One null is for the left side corner pins and another null is for the right side corner pins. So let's do it. Let's right click over our timeline and go to New, Null Object. And let's do it again so we have two nulls. Let's name the first null to L null, L for left side, and the second null to R null, for the right side. So let's move these nulls into their positions, and here is where the colorful nulls are handy, helping us to see exactly where we should put our nulls. Now we just need to connect the corner pins into them. Let's start with the top layer. Select it, press the letter E to open the effects within the layer, and find the corner pin. So for the top layer, we need to connect the lower pins to the position of their respective nulls. So let's select both nulls and press the letter P to open the position properties. And using the Pick Whip tool, connect the lower left pin to the position of the L null and the lower right pin to the position of the R null. And it doesn't work as we expected. The reason is, nulls use the main composition for their position value and the corner pins use the area of the layer they are applied to for their position value. But with a small expression, we can solve that very quickly. Let's start by writing expression in the lower left pin. So it starts like this, var l. This declares a variable named l, which will be used to refer to something in the expression. It's like giving a name to something you can usually use later. So var l equals, and using the pick whip tool, let's select the l null. Great, so now the var l equals the l null. After that, let's write from comp to surface. This is a function specific to the corner pin effects. It converts the position from composition space into a format that the corner pin can use. Then, inside of the parentheses, let's write L to comp and open brackets and write 0, 0, 0 and close brackets. And remember to insert a semicolon at the end of the line. This method converts a point from the layer space of L, your null object, to a composition space. The brackets 0, 0, 0 represents a point at the center of the null object, usually its anchor point. Resuming, this expression is used to make the corner pin effect follow the position of the null object. When you move the null in your composition, the corner pin effect will update its position accordingly. Now we can just copy the code and paste in the lower right pin and change the variable to R and update the null to the R null. And don't forget to update the variable on the second line of the expression. Perfect. Now both pins are controlled by the nulls. The only thing left to do is to copy the code and paste it into the upper pins of the bottom layer. And done! Now our nulls have complete control of the four corner pins. 
but before we start animating it, let's go inside of our text composition and delete the solids, we no longer have views for them. Excellent, with that done, let's start animating our nulls. I only want to animate the nulls in the Y axis, so I will right click over the position properties and select separate dimensions, just to be sure all my keyframes go to the Y axis. Then I will change the value in the Y position in both nulls and mark a keyframe. Then I will move my timeline needle in time and do the same thing again, and move it again, but this time I'm going to copy and paste the first keyframes I've created, making sure this animation loops perfectly. But before we play the animation, let's add another small expression, to make this animation repeat itself forever. Holding Alt, let's click over the stopwatch of the Y position, habilitating the expression editor. This time we will use an expression from the After Effects library, so let's click on the little play button and choose property and select loop out. And that's it, let's copy this expression, paste it into our other null and let's preview our animation. And it's working, the keyframes need some speed adjustment but the system is working. Let's select all the keyframes and click on the graph editor. Then let's pick them again in curve format, get to the curve presets and choose easy and ease. Give it a little preview and it's already looking much better. But if you want to make it more interesting, use the beziers of the curves to adjust them. Changing the speed of the animation makes it way more interesting. When you are happy, return to the regular timeline and that's it, it's ready to render. I hope you enjoyed it, remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers, bye bye.